Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist for Techless Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing general arrangement drawings. More specifically, how to specify settings for parts and marks for use with the tools and object level settings in our drawings. For this video specifically, we'll be covering some of the following key points. We'll briefly discuss the options available for views and dimensions on the drawing level. Then we're going to take a closer look at how mark settings are configured. So with that, let's begin. For settings that apply to the entire drawing, the options under the Views header allow us to control certain elements of the views we create when we create the drawing in and of itself. Now, some of these settings are a bit more high level and less detailed than, say, their counterparts in view level or object level settings. But despite that, these settings are pretty important and we do want to pay attention to them to configure our views when we create our initial general arrangement drawings. The layout settings allow us to control the overall layout of the drawing sheet. A drawing layout accounts for a few things, such as the sheet size and title block that we choose to use. Now, additionally, layouts also specify any tables or templates that we may want to have present on the drawing from the point of creation. This can include schedules for pores or parts, rebar bend tables, and even part lists. Tecla has several predetermined layouts for use right from the start, but users also have the ability to modify these to their own needs or create new ones to suit their requirements. This is actually a pretty important topic, and so we're going to spend more time and detail on layouts specifically in an upcoming video. Moving on, the view settings provide us the ability to specify some attributes of the view that is created with the drawing. The Attributes tab allows us to specify scale, location, and datum point settings, and even to choose if we are displaying pores or parts. The shortening controls handle a very long parts that don't have much detail in them. These options allow us to kind of shrink things if it's a very long beam with not a lot going on in it. The Label tab controls elements for the view labels and how they are formatted. Marks for each position of the view label are handled in the same way part marks are configured which we're going to get into more detail on in just a few moments. Lastly, we can also choose to depict the drawing as an anchor bolt plan and have a few settings to control this on the last tab. Now, for the detail and section view settings, these options allow us just to specify the starting number or letter for the callouts and labels for sections and details. Under the dimension header, we have options for dimensions and dimensioning. The Dimensions options allow us to format the dimension style to be used and users can adjust the units, look, and additional information populated on the dimension strings when creating the drawing. Now, the Dimensioning settings allow us to dictate how automated dimensions are controlled. There are two tabs in this dialog. The first is for the grid, where we can provide some settings on the placement of creating dimension lines for the grid itself. The second tab, Parts, allows users to specify dimension creation from the grid to the parts, and users can use filters to dictate where and for what types of objects these dimensions are created. Now, keep in mind that this tab does not provide options for fully automated dimensioning of all the parts on your drawing. Users will still need to create those dimensions themselves using the tools in the dimension ribbon or with components found in the right-hand side pane. The next section is the marks section and controls what we call marks or also known as callouts or leader lines. There are quite a few different mark types with part mark being the most common at least for concrete masonry work. Although each of these settings are basically the same there can be some small and subtle differences between the different dialogues. To get a better understanding let's look at the part mark settings and then compare those to some of the others. As to be expected, we have the load and save as fields directly at the top for saving settings and modifying them. Now, the content tab controls the text of our mark, or specifically the contents or elements that we put into the mark itself and how they are represented. Conversely, on the general tab, this controls the overall mark, including how it's visible, the framing around the text, what the format of the leader lines are, and even the position of the mark in relationship to the leader line. Now, going back to the content tab, underneath the load portion, we have the ability to specify 
which portion of an assembly or subassembly that the content is being applied to. For the most part, and generally speaking, you're going to want to keep this on the main part. However, if you are using assemblies and you don't and you want to call out additional information on parts attached to your main part, you would then switch it to secondary part. But again, for now, let's keep it on main part. To the very left of the content tab, we have the different elements that we can place into a mark. Many of these elements are common to different mark types, but you will see these change to offer specific options relevant to the object mark you're creating or modifying. To illustrate this, if we open up the reinforcement mark side by side with our part mark window, we can see some of the elements remain the same, such as name and class, but the reinforcement has rebar specific attributes to utilize, such as center to center spacing, diameter, and so on. Now, regardless of the specific options within this content list, creating a part mark remains the same. You select an element on the left and then click the Add button in the center. That moves the element over to the next column where we actually are building the content. You can add as many of the elements as you need and then arrange them and adjust the font, color, and size to the right side of the dialog box for each individual element. In addition, we can add spaces between elements or remove them, or even add a return to add another line to the mark. We can also add symbols and even unique plain text to our marks using the symbols or text elements. Now, it's easy to see that not every user-defined attribute within Tecla is specifically listed under the available elements. We can use the user-defined attribute element to specify any attribute we wish to call on in the mark that is not already listed. So it provides us with a lot of flexibility. For example, you can add the height to a mark by double-clicking on the user-defined attribute element and then typing in the correct attribute name. In this case, height in all caps. Again, this provides an immense amount of flexibility when creating mark settings. So you have the flexibility to call about just any piece of information that's attached to your part or object. If we load up our cast in place pad footing mark that we used on our object level settings to create this drawing, we can see the correlation of elements to the actual mark. Now, if we want, we can also add a few elements. Let's go ahead and add a return to the next line, and then we'll add the material to this mark, as well as add text that follows it saying PSI. I'm going to go ahead and save this with a unique name so we don't override our previous setting. And then let's go ahead and back to the object level settings and update the part mark we're using for our pad footings and then modify to see the change. It's pretty easy to go ahead and make adjustments and still control things on an overall drawing level. This helps paint the picture of how you would go ahead and start establishing your standard general arrangement drawing for plan views or foundation views or whatever type of drawing that you choose to create. Now, if we go back to the dialog box, the general tab of the mark controls what our marks look like. Now, there's a few options here, but most importantly, we can specify what the leader style is, its color, how the text sits on that leader. We can even go ahead and specify not to use the leader at all and align the text with an object. Now, if we go ahead and compare our part marks to the poor marks dialog, we can see that it's almost the same, but there are a few less elements for the poor marks as well as options on the general tab. But overall, it's going to operate the same way. As you become familiar with part marks, you're also becoming familiar with the other different types of marks. Just pay attention to some of those object-specific settings. No doubt you'll have questions on the minute detail of some of these things. The best place to get any kind of description in detail on each facet of the mark dialog box for each type is to visit our Tecla user assistance page and search for the term mark properties. I'll provide a link to the appropriate page in the description of this video. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video or for other topics, make sure to visit our Techler User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.